This is lesson 2.5, part 2, which is still on the applications of the dot product and cross product. Okay, so I'm going to teach you about work and I'm going to teach you how to torque, not how to twerk. I don't think you want to see me twerk. That wouldn't be very good. Okay, I don't know how to twerk. All right, so let's teach you about the application of dot product, which is work, and then the application of the cross product, which is torque. Okay, so first, work. Work is done when you are taking um, a certain amount of force and applying it onto an object. We're going to measure that in newtons. And you're multiplying that with how far that object is displaced from one position to another position. And that distance is usually measured in meters. Okay, so when you multiply those two components together, you get the amount of work done, and that's measured in joules. So in the situation where your force applied and your displacement are in the same direction, your theta in between both of those vectors from tail to tail is zero. And so all you have to do to calculate work is, is actually pretty simple. Just multiply the magnitudes of each of the vectors together. But I mean, like how often do you get that kind of example where both of them are going in the same direction and you don't have an angle? Probably not very often. So here's one where you have the force vector. There's an angle tail to tail with the displacement vector. Okay, and so what you still want to do is, is you still want to take the magnitude of the displacement vector, okay, and so we'll just call that d magnitude, right? And you still want to multiply it by this same horizontal vector, but that's no longer the magnitude of f. If you think about it, that is now the projection of f onto d. Okay, so the magnitude of the projection multiplied by the magnitude of the displacement will give you your new work if you have an angle. Okay, so here is the projection. And recall that it can be um, rewritten as the magnitude of f times cos theta. And then there's your d right beside it. Okay. Now, we had talked about in the last video that cos theta can actually be a negative number which would cause this entire formula to equal a negative number. And so that does actually make sense in terms of work. You can have a negative amount of work done. And I'll show that to you in a little bit. Okay, so something else I do want you to notice is that should look very familiar to you. Okay, magnitude of f times the magnitude of d cos theta is actually just the dot product of your f and your d. Okay. So moving on, I'll show you an example. Before I do, I just want to explain that if no displacement occurs, like if your D is zero, it'll make all of the work zero. As in, even if you're pushing or um, applying a force onto an object and it doesn't move, technically no work has been done. All right. All right, so example number one. A crate is hauled eight meters up the ramp by a constant force of 20 newtons applied at an angle of 30 degrees to the ramp. Calculate the work done by the force. Okay, so they asked you to calculate the work, which means that we're going to use work formula. Okay, and we're going to use the work formula that's not the dot product. Um, we're actually going to use the one that has the theta because, lo and behold, we're given an angle. All right, so you obviously know where to put the 30. Uh, be careful, guys, that the 30 has to be from tail to tail, okay? Then you also have the 8 meters, which is your displacement, and the force, which is 20 newtons. Okay, so multiplying that all together, you're going to get your certain number of joules. Don't forget your approximation dot, guys. Um, and remember that this is your exact answer. This is your approximate answer. Okay, let's move on. Here's example number two. A constant force of 24 newtons applied at an angle of 110 degrees to the ground pushes a, I can't speak, pushes a shopping cart one kilometer. Okay, so calculate the amount of force done. That should probably be a period, but anyways. First thing I want to do is I don't like this kilometers. We know that displacement must be measured in meters, so make sure that you convert that. 
Okay, so 1,000 for your D. And then you also have your force, which is 24. Notice that they didn't put 110 into the formula for your theta. Now, why is that? It's being applied at an angle of 110 to the ground. So your application of your force is actually hitting your displacement vector, and it's not tail to tail. Okay, So this is 110, but I really need it to be tail to tail. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my force vector again, just a little bit lower, so that it is tail to tail. This I know is 110, but the one that goes into the formula is this tail to tail one, which is 180 minus 110, and that's where the 70 comes from. Okay, so I calculate that and I get like 8,000 and some, something, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we had talked about work being a negative number. When does that happen? Well, remember how we had said that if cos, um, sorry, if theta is actually from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, like somewhere around there in between those two numbers, you're going to get a negative cos number, which would cause the work to be calculated as a negative. So let's just explain that a little bit. It would happen in a situation like this. If you apply a force onto the cart that is trying to travel this way, you're actually slowing it down. You're trying to stop it. You're applying an opposing force. Okay, now if I redraw your F vector and your D vector tail to tail, you can see that my theta is going to be somewhere between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, so um, when again, when that happens, you're going to get a negative work. Okay, so in this situation where you're actually applying the force this way, as in maybe you're trying to pull like the handle of the cart and slow it down because it's trying to go this way, you also get a theta that is greater than 90 degrees um, but less than 180 degrees. And so in that sense, you'll also get a negative work. Okay, so I just wanted you to see um, situations in which you would get negative work done. Okay, so let's muster up some brain juice because uh, this is a tricky question to understand. Okay, so a force of 15 newtons acting along a vector 2, negative 1 displaces a particle from A to B. If the distance is in meters, calculate the amount of work done. Okay, so they ask for work again. That means that we either have to do the dot product or we have to use a formula with the theta in it. Okay, so they didn't really mention a theta, which means I'm thinking eventually I'll probably just do the dot product. Okay, but first let's kind of orient ourselves as to what's going on. Well, I have two coordinates, so let's draw that in. This one's my A, and then my B is somewhere up here, and it's being pushed or displaced this way. So that's my displacement vector. And what's kind of confusing is this part. They told you the force and the magnitude of it. But this is not the force vector. It's just like a, let me use a different color actually. It's a different vector. Yours is actually working alongside it. Okay, so the vector from 2, negative 1, and I'm just going to draw the position vector. I want to call that a different letter, and so I'm just going to call that little f but your force vector is going along it like this. I have no idea how long. Oh no, rather I do know how long because it says 15 newtons. Um, but it is a scalar multiple of the little f vector because it's a certain number of times longer than uh, little f. Okay, so is it okay that I actually wrote it like this? Okay, so it's k times the little f vector. So the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out what f is and what d is. So let's find f first and then we'll find d and then we'll plug them both into the work formula. Okay so let's just follow along with my math. Okay so like we said for f, um, f is a scalar multiple of little f uh, which means that I can definitely just take the scalar multiple and or the scalar amount and multiplied in. 
okay? I can actually figure out what the magnitude of this vector is because I was given the magnitude of f. This is equal to 15. So I do want to substitute that in, but you need to make sure that you find the magnitude of this vector first. So we do the Pythagorean theorem thing where we take the components, square them, add them together, and then square root everything. Okay, now k is looking much nicer because I combined everything underneath the square root sign, and I can probably solve for it by getting rid of that square root. I'm going to do the same to the other side. That goes away. So I got 5k squared equals to 225, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 5 before I square root everything. Okay, so I get my k value, which is 3 root 5. And that was what was in front of my little f vector, and so I can always multiply it in, and now we've figured out our f, our capital F vector. Now going to d, d is a lot easier. Because we had two coordinates for d, I'm just going to take b minus a, okay? Because, I mean, I want the formula, or not formula, I want the vector for a, b. All right, and that was just simple subtraction. And so I get my displacement vector. Once I get my displacement vector, and I also have my force vector, I can do the dot product in order to figure out how much work was done. Now, another way you could have done it is, I mean, if you kept that scalar amount, let me scroll down a little bit. Scroll up a little bit, because I do want to show you something. If I wanted to show you the displacement and the original f, little f vector, um, I can keep the k value on the outside. I can do the dot product first with the red and the green, and then I can multiply the k value in afterwards. Okay, to the scalar, that is the product of the dottedness. <laughs> Notice that both of them give you the same answer. Okay, so it's really up to you whichever method you want to use. All right, moving on. So an application of the cross product is torque. And torque is um, a rotating force, I should say, or a rotating effect that happens when you put a force onto something. So just to kind of talk you through it, um, you see a diagram where you're going to take a wrench and you're going to try to either um, unscrew or screw in that bolt into the piece of wood. Okay, so your hand will apply a certain force onto the wrench. And depending on how you decide to apply it, so you can apply it either um, like this, which is in a counterclockwise form, or you can apply it like this in a clockwise rotation. Depending on which one you do, that screw is either going to go further down into the wood or it's going to come up out of the wood. All right, so if you think about cross product, cross product was when you had two vectors, there's a vector along here and then the force vector. So when you have two vectors and they cross each other, you're then going to get a perpendicular force that goes either into or out of your paper, and that is your torque. I said torque, I'm so sorry. <laughs> your torque that goes down or your torque that goes up. All right. Or I should say, should I say torque that goes up and down? Sure, uh, your effect that goes either up or down. Okay, now I gave you a whole bunch of variables on the side, and let me explain what they mean. I'm gonna scroll down a bit, and so you can kind of see all the variables in the different colors at the top right, and take a look at the diagram at the bottom left. Okay, so the screw is, or the bolt, is along the red vector. This is our pivot point, which means uh, it's where all the rotation is actually happening. R is the lever that goes along your, um, your wrench, okay? And so the vector always points away from the um, pivot point. And then again, you're going to apply some sort of a force um, onto it. And so the force can be going either, either in a clockwise or a counterclockwise. Actually, no, that's not right. OK, 
Okay, so let's try that one more time. Okay, so in a counterclockwise. No, 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 that was right to begin with. I'm sorry. Okay, my apologies. In this kind of direction. Okay, so either counterclockwise or clockwise, and it'll change the direction of uh, the red arrow. Okay, now beta is the angle in between your force vector, okay, and the lever, all right? Theta is the one in between your R and your F. And so notice that your F, all we did was we just transported it here instead. So technically, because of the Z pattern, your theta should always equal to your beta. Now on the right-hand side, you can note that in order to maximize the torque, like um, making sure that either this, the bolt goes into the wood um, as much as possible or comes out of the wood as much as possible, uh, you'd want to maximize like how long your lever is. So the longer your wrench, the better. Or you want to maximize your theta, which means that if it's closer to a 90 degrees, it's actually going to give you the best effect. So here are your two formulas, one with the theta and one without. Okay, now on the left-hand side, you have a box that has your vector formula for your torque. So you're going to take your R and cross your F. On the right-hand side, you have two for your magnitude, one with a theta and one without. So we can use any of these three in order to figure out whatever they're talking about. Okay, now what you can do is you can actually figure out what like what's going to happen with the bolt based on the right hand rule and I'm going to try and explain this to you as best as I can. Uh, let's use this diagram. Okay, and I'm just going to get rid of everything. Okay. So if now you're going to use your right hand, all right? Make a thumbs up. Okay. The way that your four fingers, four, four fingers are curling right now, if they curl this way, counterclockwise, no, that's clockwise, sorry, clockwise. If they're curling this way, it means your thumb is actually pointing into your paper, uh, which means that this is going to go down, all right? In other words, if your force is going in this direction that allows for a counterclockwise rotation, then your bolt is going to go into the paper. Now, if on the other hand, your force goes this way, then you're actually rotating in a counterclockwise position. And so now make your right hand um, thumbs up, okay, and curl your four fingers the same way that my, um, cur my curved arrow is rotating. So notice that your thumb your perpendicular vector is actually coming out of your paper and so that would be an example of the um, screw or the bolt coming out of the wood. All right and so what we call it is if you're turning to the left we call that lefty loosey as in you're loosening the bolt. If you turn right that's called righty tighty so you're tightening the bolt. Okay so lefty loosey righty tighty. Okay, so let's talk about some examples of torque. A 10 Newton force is applied clockwise at the end of a 30 centimeter wrench with which it makes a 120 degree angle. So first calculate the magnitude of the torque. B, describe the direction and C, include a diagram always. So I'm gonna start with C because it's probably easier to understand what's going on if we have a diagram. There was my R, okay, this is my pivot point, and I'm going to apply a force to it clockwise, which means that I'm going to apply it down this way because it's going to rotate. I'm just going to imagine that it rotates that way clockwise, but I'm not going to draw it. Okay, so here's my force vector, and that angle, which is my beta, is 120 degrees. Okay, now we do want to draw um, our vectors from tail to tail. And so just redraw your force vector this way. 
and know that this guy, your theta, which is what you actually want, because that's the one that's inside the formula, right? Because none of the formulas have a beta in it, right? Is going to be the same as your beta. So ultimately what you want to do is you want to figure out, are we going to get a situation where the bolt goes in to the paper or the piece of wood or out, out of the piece of paper or out of the wood, okay? All right, so first of all, we want to know, well, what is the magnitude of that torque? And so we can do the cross product. And since we have um, our angle, which is 120, we can definitely use this formula. Okay, notice that this is not in meters, and so we're going to convert it to meters. And then multiply our 10 Newton force times by the sine 120 degrees, and we get the amount of work. Now the direction is, if we are applying the force in this general direction, which is in a clockwise um, way, again, use your right hand and make a thumbs up where your four fingers are going to curl in that general direction. And you'll notice that your thumb, which is your perpendicular cross um, product, is pointing into your paper, which means it's going to go down. So you can either say it's going to go into your paper, which doesn't really make sense in this um, example because you're talking about a wrench, right? So let's say that instead you're tightening the bolt. It's going to go further into that piece of wood. Okay, so here's another example of torque. Um, a 50 Newton force is applied at a point on the door that is 70 centimeters from the side of the hinge edge to close it. Um, let's see, the force makes an angle of 30 degrees along the door to the door knob or along the door to the hinge side. Calculate the exact magnitude and describe the direction of the torque vector. Okay, so they mentioned torque. We want to draw a diagram. You don't have to draw the door. Okay, but maybe we'll kind of just use the door to figure out what's going on. Okay, so there's a 50 Newton force. Um, it looks like there's an R, so the pivot point should be along the um, hinges, and it's going in this general direction, away from the pivot point. Okay, so we're going to apply a force onto it, and let's see... The force makes an angle of 30 degrees along the door to the doorknob. So along the door to the doorknob, this is going to be my 30 degrees. That's probably my beta. So let's draw our theta, which is also our force vector. But this is the theta that I want, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so that's theta. I'm sorry if that looks like an 80. Okay. So what I want to know is... Is it going to, like, are the hinges, which are those kind of, I don't know if you've looked at a door before, but there's like bolts inside there. Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Okay, so that's the direction that I kind of want to figure out later on. But first I want to figure out what the torque actually is. So let's find the magnitude. All right, the magnitude is going to be, since they gave me an angle, I'm going to use this formula instead of the cross product, okay? And I have my force, I got my um, my lever, okay? So the distance of my lever, but it has to be in meters. And so that's gonna be 0 0.7, which is right here. And I got my 30 degrees, okay? So putting that all together, I can calculate the torque. Now the direction, okay? So if we think about it, let's see. If this was my force vector and it's being applied, it's going to go in this general direction, which is, and then I want you to take your right hand and curve your four fingers into the direction of my um, arrow. Okay, so this is clockwise, right? And so where's your thumb? Your thumb is pointing down, right? Or into the paper. And so what we're going to say is it's going into the paper, which again, makes no sense in terms of like a door. You're not even talking about paper. So make sure that you're saying the hinge is turning downwards. Like you won't get marks if you actually say this one. So this one, if you want to think about your homework, but actually if you want to answer the question, this one is better. All right. 
And so the final answer should be written like this. The magnitude of the torque is 3 over 2 joules, because they asked for an exact answer. And the hinge is turning downwards. OK, so I have a bunch more examples here. Um, what I'll do is I'll go through them, but uh, I might do the last ones just really quickly and you kind of just look through them and see if you understand. OK. All right, let's draw a diagram for the 6A. Uh, 50 Newton force is being applied to a right handed pencil a sharpener handle that has a lever of 15 centimeters. Okay, so here's my R pivot point, and you know that R is 15, actually, no, it's 0 0.15, right? Meters. Okay, the force makes an angle of 30 degrees and it's going clockwise. Okay, so clockwise means that we're going to go same thing like this way, right? All right, so that it goes in this general direction but I don't want to actually draw that curved arrow. OK, so that's my force vector. And then my angle is 30 degrees, which is right, I'm sorry, right here. OK, so that guy is 30 degrees. But I want it to tail to tail, so I'm going to redraw my f vector, and that's going to be 30 degrees. OK, so since I'm doing um, a clockwise, rotation, my thumb is going to go into the paper and that means that your pencil is going into the pencil sharpener. Okay, now the magnitude itself um, for the torque, what I'm going to do is I was given an angle, so I'm going to use this formula and just make sure that you had changed the um, R value, your R magnitude into meters. Okay, so 50 newtons at a 30 degrees. Okay, so for these last ones, what I want you to do is try them out yourself. Um, just try to get a diagram down and see if you can figure out if like the, uh, I guess the torque is causing the perpendicular vector from the cross product to either come into the paper or out of the paper or whatever they're talking about in that case. I don't know if they're talking about bolts or whatever going into the wood or out of the wood. So there's a bunch of questions here and I'd really love for you to try them on your own. And that's it for unit two.